the Music Hacks Network. I am Chris Bailey for those persons who are joining us for the first time. Today we have the very charismatic Paulus Simpson in studios with us. Paulus! Yes, sir! All right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, welcome to the Music happy, Hacks I'm Network. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Big up Music Hacks Network. Happy to be here. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. It's a privilege. It's a pleasure. Definitely. Um, it's always a pleasure um, going to some of these live concerts and watching you doing your performance on stage. And if you realize when I... <laughs> Yeah. That's a, that's a, if you if you realize when I, I introduced you, I said very charismatic. Um, I, I don't see another musician that commands the stage with the sort of energy that that you you display when you're performing. Wow, really? What caused that inspiration? What causes you to perform on live shows like that? Firstly, God. I will not leave that out. So firstly, God that has provided health and strength. So the health and strength that he has given me is what I use to be that charismatic on stage and to be that lively. Yes. Mm. All right. Um, what, what do they, the other persons who are performing alongside, what do they think of, of this sort of charismatic behavior from Paulus? All right, and I'm going to be honest with you. I can be honest. I'm going to give you both good and bad, right? Sometimes I, I start with the bad first. Sometimes I'm like, what him no fee, man? But, you know, you know, you can go on, he, you know, watch him. But the good is it motivates, it gives that energy for the artists and the band members around me and the crowd who is watching. Give us an example. I, I remember I was in studio once. This is not because I am like this right throughout, both in studio and on stage. So it's not something practiced, not something rehearsed. It just happens. I came to the studio one day and we were there rehearsing, but you know, just playing normal, rehearsing, not doing any, you know, just, just rehearsing, which is good. I don't know what happened. The artist turned on and looked at me and said, something not right. So everybody was wondering what not right because the music is playing correct, the artist is singing correct, the background vocals are correct, the sound was okay. We continued rehearsing. I'm still turn on and stop again and say, something not right. I was like, you know what? I wonder <laughs> if it's me now. Because I'm not doing my, you know? So, and I was having a bit of a down day on that rehearsal day, to be honest with you. And mm. I said, let me see if I cheer up myself and get into it, what will happen? Which is what I did. Started getting mm. into it. And then all of a sudden, he said, yes! The rehearsal ready now. It just start. Yes! So... <laughs> They do feed, and that's uh, how I, that's manifestation of how I, I'm aware that they feed off the energy. Exactly. And I'm happy we're discussing this, first of all, because, you know, I could never start this live stream without asking you about this. Um, when we were talking the other day in Soundcheck, I, I, heard, I heard you mentioning they have a special name for you based on how you perform on stage what do they call you you know they call me the crazy jamaican keezy <laughs> and i got that name from a female european lady when she saw <laughs> me actually she saw me in the states when i was playing and she mm -hmm. came to me and she said you're crazy you're crazy you're crazy you're jamaican <laughs> i like it you're crazy jamaican keezy so i give thanks right and that's the sort of reception in, in most places that, that you, you perform. Right, right, pretty right. much. Yes, pretty much. Okay, awesome. So, Paulus, um, as a person, uh, we see you on stage. Is this who you are as a person? The Paulus that we see on stage, who is Paulus when he is not playing the, the keyboards? The same Paulus. What you see out there, as they have a saying that says WS, I don't remember, WSY, whatever, but it means what you see is what you get. 
So it's the same palace because I enjoy everything that I do. The same exact palace. Awesome. All right. What were you like growing up? I hope my parents are on. I think they might be. I think they were the best person yes. to ask that question. They are, they are in they, fact, they, they, are, they, they are right they, here. They might be the best person <laughs> to ask that question if they're on. But um, what was I like growing up? Hmm, I was a troublesome kid because I was called like a pastor's kid, you know? So, you know, pastor's kids give the most trouble. But you were always okay. kept in line with the belt because my father believed mm -hmm. in spearing the rod and not spoiling the child. But I enjoyed family, you know, love to play, love to give jokes. My parents are jokers um, in a good way. <laughs> um, so it was fun growing <laughs> up. I was just maybe the same as I am now. Always interested in learning something new. Always trying to find something to do that is new till I bucked up in music mm -hmm. or, you know, but growing up was fun. And it was a bit different from today's day because we didn't have much of the technology right. that is there today. So we had to be more playing on the streets, football and all of these things mm -hmm. and climbing trees and, you know, not what some of these young people are doing right. today. Right. No, fortunately, uh, one of those things that you took a liking to when you were small is music. But, but what actually inspired you to pick up music? All right, my mom, and yes, she, I guess she, as I say, she's the best person to tell you this. I, let me tell you what inspired me. My grand aunt, which is my mom's aunt, has a piano at her house. Now, back in the days, not everybody would like to go to their grandmother because sometimes you know, things are boring and this and that for some people, you know. But I used to love going to my grand aunt's house because of the piano. I used to listen to cartoon um, songs and would come back and try and play it on that piano and ping pong on the piano. And my grandad said to my mom, look at that, don't take that lightly. Get him into some form of music training, some form of music school, because he has a talent for it. I didn't even know it was a talent at the time. I was just having fun seeing white and black keys and pressing it and getting different sounds and picking the sound that I heard from the cartoon and playing it back. So that's where I think it started. All right. Okay, so, so you had a, a very good ear from a, a tender age. I, I, I should think so, yes, because I could listen and come back and play <laughs> back what I heard exactly, yes. Yeah, man, that, that, that is quite extraordinary. Not many um, youngsters are able to do that at right. such a, a tender age, right? All right. Um, so uh, how many instruments were you exposed to at that time? mainly the piano but in church i was exposed to like the well the organ is the same and the guitars both bass and acoustic and rhythm guitar drumming later stages but mm -hmm. uh and violin a little later down as well but it was mostly the keyboard and the guitars all right well a, a lot of persons that have been on the the music hacks network they, they, they come here because of a particular instrument that they play. But when I interview them, I get to find out that their personal instrument is not really a favorite instrument. So I'm going to ask you, which instrument among all of those that you have mentioned is your favorite instrument? The piano. I don't even go any further. The piano, without a doubt. Piano, organ, without <laughs> a doubt. Piano. piano, organ, without a doubt. My music teacher, right. before she died, told me, you know, when I just started learning music, once you can learn to play the piano, you can learn to play any mm -hmm. instrument. That motivated me and inspired me. So the piano okay. is the best thing ever since. Well, it, with sliced bread, yes. Definitely. <laughs> All right, Paul, let's look at some of the persons that you have actually worked for over the years. I'm sure that the list is endless and <laughs> maybe we don't even have time to mention some of those persons that you have actually worked with. But just mention a few of those persons um, for this live stream. Who are some of those persons? Well, I've done a mixture of both gospel and secular and like more conscious secular. So I'll start with the gospel. I've been able, thanks be to God, to have the likes of playing for Kevin Heat, Kevin Downswell, very minimal, um, DJ Nicholas, Sister Pat, you know. Um, who else can I say? Wow. <laughs> Um, so quite a few of them in the gospel. Perpetual praise, I'll big them up as well. So 
you know, I've gotten quite a few opportunities with a lot of the gospel mm -hmm. folks. And in the secular realm, I've gotten the chances with uh, Junior Kelly, you know, Nikisha Barnes, Sophia Brown. I uh, was in a band that we used to back different artists such as Sizzler and other persons. So quite a few persons mm -hmm. on both spectrums. Right. I mentioned and Chosen as well. That, yeah. Right, Chosen. All right, where are some of the places that you have actually traveled to to perform? Um, and I US. wanted you to tell us uh, at the end, where is your, the most favorite place that stands out in your mind and why? The US, um, South America and the Caribbean for now. Um, and which one stands out the most? I can't really tell you because all of them have its unique cultural experience and and each has its, its its place in my life and my development and all of that so the u.s is good the caribbean is good different places in the caribbean different places in south america as i said because each has its own place so i, I don't have a particular mm -hmm. one that stands out just all has been instrumental in my life and i enjoy going to all of them soon be in england soon be in paris and some other places okay all right I, I have only traveled to the United States. Um, well, not for tour, but just for vacation. So I have that experience. So what, what is your experience going to the United States form as to performing in the Caribbean? What, what is the main difference that you find? And it depends on which cultural type of music, either gospel or secular, because they are very different as, as well. So in the gospel arena because you know american is also gospel in different forms contemporary jazz so the, the reception is good but um i get to find that in the caribbean it's even a warmer reception because they are more homely to your caribbean neighbors if you get what i'm saying and in the type of music that we produce mm -hmm. here in jamaica from all genres they are more receptive to each of it so the us is good because the us has their own market in terms of music so that's okay but the caribbean for me mm -hmm. Is what, and some, some, to some extent, South America as well is drawn to our flavor, regardless of if whatever genre it is. Okay, cool. All right. Um, Paul, would you say that you have accomplished um, all the things that you would have wanted to accomplish musically? Oh, no. I still have so much more. The sky is the limit. I, I mean, <laughs> there's so much more to be accomplished. And I know there, I will be able to do that before I retire, before I'm gray here. By the grace of God, I know that I'll be able to do that. But there's so much more to be accomplished because every day you learn something new. Every day there's something else in music to achieve for. All right. So what else are you looking forward to? Just being a better musician all together, just being a better polis, being more charismatic, being more everything, just being a better rounded musician. Like, you know, I won't call any names, I don't want to get in trouble, but just being a much better musician than I am today. <laughs> awesome. I, I, is there anything that you are currently working on to, to sort of set um, this in motion for the future within the next five years? What are you currently working on now? In terms of to be a better musician, as, uh, I mean, from right. that angle, just practicing, trying yes. to practice a little bit more because, and then we'll go into some other things later, but trying to practice more, trying to be around the better musicians in my estimation, that also motivates me. Listen to music a lot, practice, listen to music and be around the persons that are at a higher level so you can learn from them. And once you do that, you'll get in that mode and you just, you'll get better, trust me. Right. I'm, I'm happy that, that, that you said that because a lot of young musicians, well, I'm not bashing the young musicians, both young and old sometimes probably get into that mode where they think they don't have to practice oh, or practice is not an ongoing thing. So I'm happy that you alluded to that fact. Yeah. If you yeah. should mentor a younger musician at this time, what are some of the things that you would tell this young musician? Firstly, put God first. That's the first thing I tell him. Because without God, you can't do anything. Because him is the one that, he's the one that give you, gave you the talent. So you want to put God first, you pray about everything, leave everything at the foot of the cross, practice. 
listen to music mm-hmm. generally, all genres. You might have a particular one, but to become a better and a rounded musician, listen to all genres so you can see what you can learn from the different genres. Practice each of them as much as you can. And in practice, I can break that down with scales and everything, but practice generally. And just listen. Seek advice if you need advice. So if you have someone that you look up to and they're a bit better than you, go to them, contact them. You know, see whatever advice you can get from them. Learn from them. Educate yourself as much as possible. If you can go to school of music or mm. anywhere you can to educate yourself, push for that as well. So that these are some of the few things I'd ensure I mentor and, you know, tell the younger musicians. Mm. Yeah, man. Awesome. Um, I, I, a lot of young musicians um, have been speaking to me since the, the, the music acts came about. And... They are quite happy for the sort of humility that you guys have been displaying on the Music Hacks Network. A lot of them didn't even think that you, some of you guys were so cool, you know, ah. or so approachable, yeah, that's you true. know? So that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, I, I, I want to tell all the younger musicians out there that anybody that you see um, featured on the Music Hacks Network, you can definitely, right, contact them and find out all the information that you want to find out about them musically. All right, Paul, I'm going to allow you to go into your presentation very soon, but how how can we contact you via social media? YouTube, Crazy Jamaican Keezy, and that's K-E-Y-S-I-E. Instagram is Paula Simpson or P. Simpson Jr., which is P. Simpson Jr., and it's the same for Facebook, Paula Simpson. So both Facebook, Instagram, Paula Simpson, YouTube, Crazy Jamaican Keezy. Reach out, like, subscribe, and also like and subscribe to the Music Hacks Network. Um, what's the topic that you brought to the Music Hacks Network tonight? Well, I, I tried to find a topic because seeing all the presenters and before me, <laughs> We're very good, and I applaud them. And again, big up to the Music Hat Networks. Um, so I brought, to the best of my knowledge, I'm going to present on balancing a nine-to-five job with music and how you prepare for retirement. I know the flyer said pre-retirement, everybody, but if you want to retire early, it still can work. So yes, it's balancing retirement. <laughs> Definitely. All right, sir. Um, ladies and gentlemen on YouTube, and also on zoom mine is a task and mine is a pleasure to present to you the crazy mad musician Kizzy, mr paulus simpson <laughs> thank you everybody and welcome again make sure you like subscribe to the music hat networks I, I need to pronounce that properly music hacks networks right and you can like and subscribe to Crazy, Jama- Crazy Jamaican Keezy. Tonight, everybody on YouTube, if you see me turn my head, it's because I'm looking at the YouTube as well as my monitor. Welcome, YouTube. Welcome, Zoom. Welcome, everybody. I am Paula Simpson Jr. Come appearances on. So I have a Paula Simpson Sr. Tonight is going to be interactive, not very long. I have a very short presentation. I know some of you want to see me playing and doing whatever. I'll try. Not very easy when it's just me one. But if circumstances were different, you would have gotten something else that I told Chris in the sound check. Um, so where you can, feel free to ask me anything at any point you want to interject. Let the chat keep going. For this, in the YouTube world, I want to see at least 100 likes or 150 likes for this video tonight and for the Music Hat Networks. Um, so, and I have two giveaways, one on YouTube and one for Zoom. So... We'll get into that. So I'll start the presentation with, oh, somebody said, great topic. All right, Jethro, if you can just fly your camera open, sorry, and your mic, tell me why you think it's a great topic. Greetings, greetings, everybody. Good night. Um, I can't really turn on my camera right now because I do have on a shirt. But oh, I don't want to Christian. That's fine. <laughs> All right, me. go ahead. Um, I say it's a great topic because I know, like myself, as a bass player, um, there are many musicians that maybe would not 
would like to have a nine to five job, but also would like to do music and would like to go on shows or would like to experience that type of um, thing in the music. So I think it's a great topic because that's something I would like to know about or hear from. All right. Nice, nice. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Thank you very much. Well, yes, I do work a nine to five job. I am employed at the National Land Agency. I recently got promoted to their network security specialist. So I, yes, I'm in IT and I thank God for that as well. Thank God for my parents who are supporting me right throughout. <laughs> and it is not easy to work nine to five and be a full-time musician because I would maybe consider myself as a full-time musician as well because I'm able to go on some of the tours and be able to do some shows as a regular full-time musician but as you all know sometimes especially here in Jamaica sometimes doing for some persons doing music full-time is not necessarily financially fulfilling that was not my reason though Music was really more of a hobby for me. I enjoyed doing it. I loved doing it. It started to become more professional as I got older and more into practicing and playing for artists. And then it became of a, a job as well, so to speak. But I still consider music for me as a hobby. Maybe that's why you all see me enjoying myself like that on stage, because it's not just about the money. I still enjoy what I do full time. And I enjoy, enjoy everything that I do, from my job to my family, my friends, music, and you all who know me can attest to that for sure. So in everything you do, give thanks, love it, enjoy it. How easy it is? Well, as you know, before I go into my presentation, and as I said, you can open up your mics and everything, and you can ask me anything you want to ask me. I'm looking at the YouTube. Hi, everybody. Well, hi, Camille Robinson from the Robinson family. Davian, big up yourself. Cassandra, Queen Nash, Jasset. All the way from New York, big up, give thanks and praises. Right. Um, with 95, you know, it demands a lot of you in terms of depending on who you are employed to. And that can be a little bit tricky. Whereas if you know you have some places like that, like a call center that runs at certain times and you have to work in the night so you can get to maybe go rehearsal. So it's a bit tricky. And worse, if you're doing school like myself, doing school right now as well, completing my master's at University of, West, of the West Indies. So it's not easy, but you have to dedicate time, energy, and at all things, put God first, which that will just segue me right into the presentation very quickly, which I hope you'll be able to all see. Um, so Chris, everybody, just tell me if you can see it. I don't know YouTube, if you can see the presentation, please to type and tell me. So I can go into it and let me make sure, let me stop this, let me just make sure that, right, let me do this part of it. All right. Can we see the presentation, everybody? Um, Not yet? Almost. Almost. Hmm. Yes. All right. Jetro, mom and dad, you can see the presentation. Joe Mac, everybody, you can see the presentation. Yeah, we see, we're seeing it. We're seeing it. All right. Let's let's yeah. go right.
have that balance in your life? Well, tonight, my presentation will go into work-life balance definition, work-life balance reality, how to improve your work-life balance, preparing for retirement, and retirement solution. So it's going to be very quick, very short, and I'm just going to touch on my experience and what I can share with you all. Work-life balance. Can anybody on Zoom tell me what is the definition of work-life balance? Anybody, quickly. Remember, I have two giveaways, one on Zoom and one on YouTube. All right, bless up, bless up, bless up, brothers. Give thanks. Yeah, man. So, all right, so work-life balance, when me get understand from it is really um, how you manage your time with work and your social life, so to speak. Yeah, so basically that tells me anything. All right. So you say how you manage. That sounds good. I'll tell you if you get something shortly, but that sounds good. So meaningful daily achievement and employment in all aspects of personal life, work, family, friends, and self. So you mentioned some of those stuff, Joel, right? And a vital factor in achieving a balance is making sure that work does not overwhelm or dominate and also that it does not cause damage to the individual by the way of negative stress. Because in a nine to five job, that can happen. You can become stressful because of the type of job, the type of work that you do. Sometimes the persons that you're around and working with, that can become tricky as well. Yeah. That is the reality. Achievement and enjoyment in work, family, self, and friends. And work for some is not just a nine to five. Work is also music. Because for some persons, that is their nine to five. Music is their nine to five, correct? So yeah. work entails all of that for those who work with government or private sector and also who are self-employed through music and all that, uh, other things. And you might even be a musician that own your own business as well. So work entails all that. But this is what the work balance reality involves, family, self, and friends. Family is very important. I don't need to stress that. Friends are good to have. Make sure you have the right persons around you that will motivate you, tell you when you're wrong, and honest about it, and be truthful. You need those type of friends and self you have to take care of yourself if you don't you're in trouble all right the key word here is balance stop doing the things that aren't working many of us are doing some stuff that not working and we're still doing it for some reasons why i don't know anybody doing that anybody can tell me that they're really doing that let me see anybody in youtube you, you're doing that sometimes youtube let me see um are you doing things that aren't working all right, somebody say yes. All right, all right. All right, good. And I guess in Zoom is the same, correct? Find the right balance that works for you. So that comes down to you, the individual, and your personality, who you are. So you have to find that right balance within yourself and focus on your small successes. I know sometimes a lot of musicians want to just start playing for big artists just like that and them just come out of music school or them just learning to play and want to just go so sometimes it don't work like that you have to start small become the best drummer keyboardist basically at your church or in whichever school band that you are in or anything like that and take it from there continue to practice continue to make something of yourself and it will just keep growing and growing and growing and that's how it worked for me so you smoke focus on, sorry focus on your small successes in life if it means that you have to go to school of music, if it means that you have to pass all your CXEs, you have to get, get a degree in outside of music, do it. Focus on the small successes and then continue to elevate. Making sense so far, everybody? Yeah, perfect, perfect sense. All right. I saw the one person on sign on Zoom, which, all right, that's good. All right, oh, sorry. Let me continue here. Come on, making sense. All right, so my next slide is five areas of focus. Manage your time, set limits, and learn to say no. Unplug when you leave work. Take all your vacation time. Talk to others about your stress level and lean on your support system, especially when you are stressed. 
resolve to take better care of yourself, get physical activity, eat well, and get an adequate amount of sleep. Amen. There you go. Yeah, I do run and I do play basketball and I try to keep active and I do work out in the gym as well. And these things are very important. Let me go back to them again. Let me start with number one, manage your time and set limits and learn to say no. Balancing a nine to five and music, that is critically important. Time, managing your time. You have to set your limits and you have to say no at times. For example, I work from 7, 30 in the mornings to four in the weekdays, correct? An artist might call me and say, hey, I have a gig coming up and the band can rehearse at 10 o'clock in the morning. That might be difficult for me because I have a job. So what do I do? Say, no, can't do that. I'll find another keyboardist for you who can manage that rehearsal time. Life goes on. Sometimes they say, no, we want you for sure. I say, okay, then what's the next possible best time you can set up the studio for me? What if it's your lunchtime? Maybe I have to just work with that. Okay, I'll use my lunchtime. So sometimes I have to just eat a patty and a cocoa bread and drink water on the way to rehearsal, quickly do it and head back to work. Sometimes it's after work. And you have to also learn to respect other people's time. So if you set a time and they say that is the time, you have to remember the other musicians too. Sometimes they are full-time musicians, so they have their family, they have other things to take care of. If you X time, you have to be there. And that is critically important. I'm happy for one of my mentors who was on Music Hacks Network, Gregory Palmer, who also mentioned on one of his quality was being on time. And I will attest and agree to that because he, and that's what makes a difference in a musician life as well, when they can see how timely you are. Because remember, you know, in music, time is about everything. Am I correct? Time is everything in music too, you know. So if you're not on yes. timing, you can throw off everybody. So sometimes I have to rehearse after work. And um, I'm happy for the band members that I do play with, and the respective band members who will sometimes put up, and not put up, but I should say, will oblige me by rehearsing at the times I'm available as well. So I have to make very good use of that. Unplug when you leave work. I mean... For me, rehearsal is unplugging because I enjoy everything I do. So I'm happy to go to rehearsal after work because I'm going to have fun at rehearsal. I'm going to enjoy it because I'm going to be doing something else that I love. I already enjoyed my 7.30 to 4. Now I'm going to something else that I love again, which is music. So it's just an enjoyment upon enjoyment. So that for me is unplugging. For other persons, it might be different. You might want to go to the pool or just go have a drink or just relax. That is also good. After work sometimes is very good. To unwind, unplug, you know, taking a deep breath. <sighs> you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Take all of your vacation time. For some of us who work, we tend not to take our vacation. Sometimes because we want to save it to go on a tour or something like that. So yes, we have to be very careful as musicians who work 9 to 5, how we take our vacations. But outside of using it for going on a tour or so forth, it's also good when you have nothing, just take your vacation, go to Rio, explore your country, Jamaica, go to all of these. I'm not big enough Rio. Rio, I'm not doing any advertisement, <laughs> but go, just enjoy the North Coast. Enjoy your country. Find a nice spot in Portland or Montego Bay or St. Anne. Go, take your vacation, enjoy yourself because you deserve it. That's a part of you being you, you know, that I said in the first part. Talk to others when your stress level is high and learn to lean on. I talk to God a lot. I talk to my parents where possible. I talk to my friends. And sometimes I, I don't know if I go through a lot of stress because God has been good, thanks be to God. But there are times when you do have a lot going on for you and it can become stressful and bothersome. Pray about it and leave it at the foot of the cross. Speak to persons who you know can encourage and motivate you. That is critically important. Let me hurry along. And as it says, resolve to take better care of yourself. Going on that vacation for you. You don't have no tour. You don't have nothing happening. Just book a vacation. Go somewhere and enjoy yourself. That physical activity, as I spoke about, I run at different places. You know, find somewhere to run. Emancipation Park, Palisades. Be safe. Mountain Spring, be safe, please. But enjoy yourself. You know, get in the gym because, you know, being a musician and working a full-time job, you have to be fit. You have to be healthy because your brain takes a lot to work during the day and to still be focused for rehearsal. Because, you know, you remember when, when you're in music, you're learning, working out arrangements and, 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 and all of these things. You have to be clicking at all times. 
eating healthy, sleeping well, all of these are a part of the makeup of helping to balance that work, nine to five, and also your music life and anything else, your family and so forth. All right. Making sense so far? Again, balance, yes. work, yes. life. Let me see yes. on YouTube. Making sense, YouTube? All right, Nicholas, hopeful. But yes, give thanks, give thanks. I think I lose too much music work having a nine to five. Yeah, let me, I'm going to just touch on that. I remember everybody, this is an interactive session. So I, I am being interactive with it at the same time. Yes, that can happen sometimes because your employer don't want to let you go. That is one. Or you have to be very careful with how you do that uh, in terms of, I remember I had a tour to do once and I had a big project at work and I'm like, wow, how am I going to do this? But God was so good that I declined the tour because of the project, because you have to know where your bread comes from and you have to be smart about it. Remember with music, artists need musicians as well as musicians need artists, but you'll always get work once you keep practicing and once you're around the right people and once you focus and you keep praying. No, you're not going to always have a nine to five job because it can fire you at any time. So you have to know how to do it. So I had to decline it. And thanks be to God, though, the project was successful. And I focused all my energy on the project. I was a bit sad afterwards saying, wow, I maybe missed out on that. But about uh, maybe a month or so after that particular project ended, I uh, was going to get ready to take some vacation days. And just as I was about to do that, there came another tour within the period of my vacation. Because for some persons, like when you go to Europe, it's not easy to just run, go to Europe and come back. So, you know, you might be there for a little while and so forth. But for, for some of my shows, they're like weekends sometimes or one week and it falls within the time you can take vacation. That works as well for me. When I was about to take my vacation, another set of shows came up and it was just around the same amount of money that the other one would have given me. Just a little bit more because I was even being paid more for that as well. So I was grateful for that and I could take my vacation and I could be able to go on that one, do it, collect, come back, give thanks and praises. The rest is history. So let me see if I can. So I understand what you're saying, Nicholas Siko. First one, focus. That makes some sense, everybody. Well, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Anybody have any questions for that first part of the presentation? Um, let me make sure I go on YouTube and see as well. Oops, no. Let me go here. Anybody have any questions? You can shoot any question at me right now in terms of that. Because that was just a quick presentation on because I can go very deep into it. I might take up the whole of Mr. Music Hat Network's Chris Bailey time. Remember to like and subscribe to Music Hat Network. But any question from YouTube, any question from Zoom, you can always open. Let me just pause the presentation here. And then I just pause it here. As and then I go and go back to it for the next part of it. Any questions? Ask away. So open up your mic, open up your video. And feel free to ask quickly before I go into the other aspect of the presentation. Yes, bless up. Give thanks. Yes, sir, Paulus. Hey, man, so we want to find out now. Um, because I remember I work a nine to five where I work with the company for four, four plus years and never take a vacation. 
how you know when she said no to a show um, um, as opposed to, you know, your nine to five. All right. How you make that decision? Joel, four years I never take a vacation. You lose all them vacation days. You know? Remember, I say I paid vacation that to you, know, man. So you must always at least every year take a couple of days out of it, man. Because you need time for you. Because if you're not healthy and you don't enjoy yourself, you can't work. You can't do anything, correct? Yeah. Um, so the balance is dependent on you and your job, as I say. Because, for example, as I gave you my example, I had a project and that was a major project. And I'm like, wow, that major project are going on tour for that amount of money. So it was a bit difficult, but I had to give kudos to the job because that was important at the time. Because you have to also remember one of the beauties and benefits for me as a or for persons that work at 95, that's a constant money that comes in monthly, what you are more sure of sometimes than musically. So it's not every day you have a tour. You know what I mean? It's not every day you have a show. But you know, at least at the end of the month, you'll be getting X amount. So any additional income from these shows or so forth is, as I said, it's additional benefit, additional income. So you have to weigh within yourself how to, and you have to weigh with your job as well. I always tell people this too, communicate a lot, have a very good relationship with your job. I have a very good relationship with my job. Thanks be to God. So if I need to do anything, I will check how much days I have, what's my balance like for my vacation, and I can use that as much as possible. Sometimes you have a thing called no pay leave. I wouldn't necessarily advise everybody to take that, but if you want to balance taking that because you know if you go and do that, it will still work out back financially fine. But where you don't have to, don't. But communicate. Don't miss now for the job and go run, go do a show, and then them catch you. You understand what I'm saying? Because that has happened before. Where not with me, but I've heard a story where oh took some days to go do a Caribbean show, claimed to be sick on the job. At the airport, there was an individual supervisor on the same flight going to that same Caribbean country for a job. The job sent them to that. How you how you how you manage that? What do you do when your boss look at you and say, Hi Mr. Joel, I'm happy to see that you're still sick, you know? There's nothing you can do. So one Locker has to be very it. careful. You understand me? One has to be very careful. So it depends on you, the individual. You have to weigh what the job requires and what the show requires. Oh, yeah, the and within and yourself, you work out the pros and cons. Again, pray about it. Let the Lord be a guide. Speak to your supervisor. Speak to your manager if needs be. Communicate. Talk to them. Communicate. And maybe something can be worked out. And you just take it from there. Hope that answers your question. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Anybody else have any questions? All right. Let me go back to YouTube. All right. Chris, you all right? I know you're quiet, you know, but I just want to make sure you're okay, too. Yes, man. All is well. All is well, all right. sir. Paulus. All right, good. So I'm going to go into the next part of the presentation. As I said, folks, ask your questions on YouTube. Feel free to ask your questions here. So I will then go to here. Okay, let me start it from there. Yes. Let me go back to here. Let me go into the second part of my presentation, which will then now entails. I won't say anything. Is that it? 
Well, as you can see, preparing for retirement. We all are going to get to that stage, all being well, once we are still alive. Would you all agree, both Zoom and YouTube? That's right. So That's right. That's right. All right. All right. Bless up, Kenton. Big up, big up, big up, big up. You said church musicians love to play every opportunity they get. Do you think they should say no to certain gigs and take break vacation from playing at times? Let me just answer that quickly. Love to play up every opportunity. Yes, they should. They should. They should. Because sometimes, let me tell you, um, Kenton, and, I, and I've done this quite a few times because I have also done events where I can't make it, not only because of the job, but because sometimes you need a break. And what I do is when I can't make it, I call another musician because sometimes you need to elevate and uplift other musicians and give other musicians a chance as well. Mm -hmm. We can't be doing everything at all times and everybody just seeing us. A part mm -hmm. of building the music fraternity is also helping to develop the other yeah. musicians around you and motivate you as much as possible. So I do take a break and I would call you can turn and say, hey, can you play for so and so for me at this time or so forth? Both, it doesn't matter if it's overseas or, 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 or locally um, because uh, you need to elevate everybody. So yes, you should take a break at times and take a vacation as a musician. All right, so let me go into preparing for retirement, as I said, because everybody will get there at some point. And a lot of us, as musicians who are not working, what will happen? Not, not mean musicians are not doing a nine to five. How does one prepare for retirement in terms of pension and all of that? Unlike the persons that have a nine to five that are enrolled through their employer through a pension scheme, it's a bit different. So one has to know how to juggle that and to be ready. Because I've seen and I've seen older musicians, not a lot, some a few that I've known in my era who are before me that mismanagement and not properly preparing and having information ready didn't prepare them much for their retirement or as they get older because that sometimes you have to stop you will stop everybody has their time thank god for usain bolt he has his time every musician has his time and there will become a time when it's no longer you in the spotlight so once it is you in the spotlight ensure that you make use of it as much as possible and do the best with it but there comes a time when you have to then prepare for when it's not you in the spotlight you're outgoing what do you do all right so here's the plan this is my plan really research money management and your health so this is policy's plan so i'm just sharing you my little plan research because knowledge is power so Can what you do i do can you make the screen a little bigger? Okay. All right. The, the present. All right. Yeah. Let me try that. Um, let me try that. I'm going to ask mommy and daddy to mute a little as well. Um, hmm. Is this any better? Right. Okay. That's good. That's better. All right. Great. All right. So research knowledge is power. For me, if you are not working nine to five and enrolled in a pension plan or scheme, as a musician, full-time musician, research, find out from your bank, find out from your mortgage institution, find out from your investment, call these places, your bank, your investment companies, some of Guardian Life, Sajikor, these places that offer, you know, health insurance, life insurance, find out, call them, find out how can I, as a full-time musician, get a pension plan because I'm not enrolled to an employer and so forth. So research all that you can. Learn about everything as much as you can because it's very important. Money management, you start saving, keep saving and stick to your goals. You do a show, or should I read everything? Right, and if you're not saving, it's time to get started and read everything. Start small if you have to try and 
increase the amount you save each month and downsize your debt. A lot of times, musicians, we go on tour, we get X amount, we go to Europe, get $1,500 a week or 1,200 euro, depending if you're not the MD or not. And you go on a tour for three months and that's a good change. Can anybody tell me if you go 1500 per week for three months is how much tell me in the next 10 seconds and you'll get the first prize person on zoom can tell me that ten seconds fifteen hundred for three months ninety days five four three. go again one hundred and thirty four thousand <laughs> Somebody is said that, 18? No, but you said, oh, you've seen that. Okay. I'm sorry. You sure? 134,000. Yeah, he oh. got it. Right. Because that's 1,500 times what? 90 day. All right. Then. And Good. Chris, can you make sure you take the name of that person and telephone number and contact for me, please? Because they will get the first prize that is on Zoom, and the next prize will be on YouTube. All right, who was that, Joel? Yes, sir, Chris. All right, Joel. Somebody put 4,500. No, no, no. <laughs> no, Eddie. Did what you say, Alex, or did you just say 15,000? Because what 1500, did you say? 1,500. So that is one five per week. Did you for three that? months. Okay. So. And yeah, it can be either euros or, or USD. But um, a lot of times, so you get, so that's 135, right? So you can work out the difference in Jamaican. But we're not even going to go so far as three months. Now you say you get $1,000 for four shows on the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, two on Sunday. So Friday, Saturday, and two on Sunday. Um, so you leave Thursday, coming back Monday, you do show Friday, Saturday, and two on Sunday. And that's $1,000 for a show. Anybody can tell me on YouTube how much is that you come home with? How much you will come home with on Monday? US, $1,000. I'm giving Eddie a chance for this one. Ten seconds to go. YouTube, anybody outside of Edward? All right, five, four, three, two, one. Anybody on Zoom want to answer it? Four thousand. All right then, four thousand. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure what the dollar is today in Jamaican, but if you should say, put it at 150, and then 4,000 US, wait, go again now, it's times or divide? Anybody can help me? Times. times. So it's 4,000 times 150. Tell me how much yeah. Jamaican that you come home with. 600,000. Great, but I'll leave it in US for now. Out of that 4,000, sometimes some people who work in 9 to 5 don't really get that at the end of the month. At the and, end of the year, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes the taxes have to come out of that. But thank God for some of the, your, your management team, they would have already taken out whatever taxes need to come out of it when you go on the road. So what you get in your hand is that for those of us who have work permits and understand how it goes. So you get that 4,000 in hand. What do you do with that 4,000? No, I'm not saying that you should not come and buy a car because all musicians, we need a good car and a secure vehicle to transport our equipment and ourselves going to these events. So it is good. So look at what you need. Look at your, your essential things. Do you need a new guitar? Do I need to get a new MIDI keyboard? Do I need some strings? You know, do I need some sticks? Do I need a drum set, an electrical or acoustic? Look at what your prior and your immediate need is and you cater to that. No, don't spend all of your money on everything one time because you have to save. So if like, for example, if I get 4,000, what I do is I save some, I might take 1,000 out of that and 
put in a U.S. account in the States or come home to Jamaica. If you do have a U.S. account in the States, you come home to Jamaica, that 1,000, you put it in a U.S. account here at your own bank, whichever your bank is, Scotia, Sajikor, NCB, JMMB, whatever your bank is, you split that 1,000, put it in a U.S. account, like 500 in a U.S. account and another 500 maybe in your local account. You understand whatever the conversion rate is going to be. So you have to start small. What I do, and as for persons who are working, what I do when I get paid as well, I save a little, even if it's 100 US dollars out of my salary every month towards my US account or towards an account that you can put up for savings. So retirement is not just about pension, but it's also leading up to, which is maybe I suppose a pre-retirement. So you put your money and you save your money where you can leading up to that. Um, you get paid at a church. I know some churches in Jamaica would love for them to pay us a little more, so we can understand that. But if you get eight thousand dollars, take two thousand dollars out of it, put it in a local account, put it somewhere where it's untouchable for a time, because you know church somewhat pay you every week or every month, whatever the thing is. So you take a portion out of that, and I'll go into that very shortly. So save as much as you can. If you don't start saving, please do. Try to minimize your debt. Don't put yourself into so much debt. That happened to me once. Parents talked to me, never listened, got into debt. It was a sticky situation, but thanks be to God, I got out of it. I'm on a much better financial path and track, and thanks for persons. Listen to your parents. As I said, listen to persons who are around you, very important, and listen to persons who are educated. And as again, as I said in the, in this, in the, search, in the PowerPoint, do your research, because knowledge is power. Let me hurry up and go ahead to the next one. Oh, and, oh, sorry. Let me go back here. Everybody understanding so far, right? Making sense? I hope I'm making sense, you know. Because I'm doing it in a nutshell, basically. So I hope I'm making sense. Yeah, man, making sense. And in your health, you know, where you can also get life insurance. As a musician, it's good to get insured because you can lose your fingers. You can lose your voice. You can, well, I don't know if you can insure your voice, but it's good to get life insurance and insure. You can insure your equipment as well. So if something should happen to your keyboard, you're covered. There, you can actually do that here in Jamaica. But it's good to have life insurance because in some life insurance, there's an investment policy side to it that you can get while you're alive. And with your life insurance, will help to take care of you when you're gone because we all have to go and we understand that. So get insured, stay healthy. If you're not healthy, you can't perform on the job. You can't perform as a musician. So I always going to keep stressing that stay healthy. Yes, I know some musicians have big belly and all of that. But get in the habit of getting fit because the more you can play, the better. I mean, the more you stay fit is the better you can play and perform and have that energy on stage. And that's how I have to do it, actually. <laughs> Retirement solution. All right, this is for designed for persons who are not contributing towards a pension plan. And this may be because they work in an organization which does not have a pension fund or they are self-employed and or they own a small business and want to offer pension plan to their workers, including themselves. So there is a retirement solution for everybody. Me who work in 95, person that is self-employed, person if you own your own business, because you know some musicians might have them little farm or a little business, they can also ensure that there's a retirement and a pension plan for themselves as well as their workers. Number one, and this is just three quick things that I came up with. There's a lot more, but I'm just summarizing. So. You can start where you can afford and build from there. So stop worrying and thinking that you need a big amount to start with. No, start with what you can start with. Because every, there's a saying in Jamaica, every mickle make a muckle. So start where you can start and be consistent with it, number one. Number two, save up to 20% of your income. So whatever you get, if anybody on YouTube can work out 20% of that 4,000 4, and tell me, quickly youtube because the next price is for youtube 20 percent of that four thousand is how much Fifteen seconds Go uh, 10 seconds Going once. 
going twice. I still give somebody on YouTube a chance to answer it. So if you can come up with what 20% is of that 4,000. And if you're monitoring the chat, Chris, while I'm doing the presentation, because I do it on the other screen, you can tell me if, who is it and you can get their partic particulars. Ah, somebody got it. HJA underscore musical. So you need to contact myself or Chris, the brother Chris from Music Hack so we can sort out your reward. So that is HJA musical from. By the way, 800 is correct. Yes, 800 is correct. Right. It, um, so HAJ Musical from YouTube is our winner tonight. So a round of applause, everybody. And Joel was our winner on Zoom. So those two persons need to contact me. Or Chris right after. So you save 20% of your income and save more towards retirement so you have more in the long run. If you do go to, uh, for example, let's say JMMB, do you have good retirement solutions? Go to JMMB, not advertising, but go to them for an example. Tell them you're a musician. Ask them, how can I save? How can I put towards a pension plan for myself that will help my family at the end of the day because we all want to get married and have kids? They might tell you the same thing. Save 20% of whatever you get paid at any time and put it towards this fund. And when you work out that until you're ready to retire, everybody know the retirement age in Jamaica? Zoom or YouTube, what is the retirement age in Jamaica? 60. 65. 65. Yeah, it was adjusted the other day. All right. So you, you're right. So, but whoever, for example, Joel, I don't want you to tell your thing on the air, but I say you're 20. 65 yeah. to 20 is how much years? 65 to 20, you're 45 years. And if you can save 20% for the next 45 years out of that same 4,000 US, how much you come up with when you're ready Go to again. retire? 20. If, if you can save 20 percent which is the 800 dollars yeah. for the next mm -hmm. 40 how much years you say 45 45 years until you retire how much would you yeah. have earned or made at the age of retirement you can work out that and then get back to me at the end uh, and right. yeah man and number uh, pay less income tax as deductions for pension contributions are not taxable. That's a very important point. So you end up paying less income tax. And we know income tax here in Jamaica is very high. Uh, so as deductions for pension are not taxable. So please note, they are not. So that's why you can save the 20%, all right? And number three, as I said, just three quick points. You can choose to retire early if you want because you can start receiving your pension at age 50 rather than 55 or later stipulated by a lot of the pension plans because when they tell me how much that figure is you can understand why and that is just saying 20 percent if you can save it if you can save more do so because the more you save the more beneficial it will become to you all right if you have any question or answer basically that's the end of my presentation but um now is the time to ask all the questions very quick presentation there, not long. Awesome, awesome, sir. Paulus, the crazy musician. <laughs> that has been another well executed presentation on the Music Hacks Network. And I realize that the persons on YouTube, they are really enjoying the mathematical experience this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy for All that. right, and also the persons on Zoom. Big up yourself, Joel, and the other persons who are participating. Yes, Delroy, that's very, very informative as Delroy is sharing in the chat. All right, we're gonna go into our Q&A very quickly. All right, we don't want to lose any momentum. All right, but before we do that, while the person is on Zoom, I think enough their questions, all right, so, to actually take with us. Uh, turn, turn on it, the, the, 
the audio. Sir Simpson, turn on the the, the, the audio. Oh, that you, you're going to my parents, right? Yes, yes. Oh, I just hearing you. Mom and dad, you have to turn on unmute now. That's your time to unmute. There you go. You have unmuted. There you go. All right. Share with us for two minutes. Night, everybody. Night, night, mom. night. Night, Mrs. Simpson. Night, night, moms. I listened to Paulus in his presentation, Paula St. Aubin Simpson Jr., AKA Paul. And uh, he mentioned that it's important to take better care of oneself. And well, I can attest to the fact that he is an avid exercise person with a rigid daily workout program. And I also believe that that's in keeping with the saying, exercise aids in the anti-aging process. Yes. Also, he's a stick to it ism individual when it comes on to taking vitamins. Yes, Paulus? I guess he's virtual. hoping virtual. he'll remain. My guess is he's hoping he'll remain at the fountain of youth. And maybe forever. In Paulus's early life, there's one thing I can remember. He had an inquisitive mind from an early age. For example, there was once when he was at age eight, I believe, he pulled apart the family computer. And we were out, we came in, his dad and I, and all the pieces were laid out on the floor in the living room. And so when we saw the, the, the pieces or the parts of the computer, we said, oh, put each piece back together. And surprisingly, in less than no time, he reassembled the computer. And I believe that today, his interest in even IT, that would have, it would have started from there. And maybe it's a good thing. So for that, you know, I am grateful and give God thanks. Praise the Lord. I have been watching Paulus from that young age, as your mommy said, pulling, pulling apart the computer was not pleasant and pleasing to me. But I was very shocked when to realize that he put back every piece together. As I told him, everything must go back as is. Or else. And he did it. <laughs> so I give God thanks today that he has helped him and molded him to be what he is today. And we continue to pray for him and pray for the, those of whom he has to associate with, that they become better and better in, the, in, in their lives. And also we believe in, you know, in corporal punishment. We believe in punishment to some extent. I don't mean to abuse your child, but at least to offer know. them some guidance and so on in their life. And as the word of God says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he'll not depart from it. So when your children are young, then you can instill the good principles in them. And that's what we have done with Paulus and his siblings, his brother, his sister. And I believe it has borne fruit today, for which we are grateful. We are giving God thanks and we are, we are proud of it. Amen. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much, Mr. and Mrs. Simpson. All right, Paul. So now we know <laughs> all right. Now we understand why you say you were, you were a troublemaker, Paul. All right then. But they didn't run to spirit the rod though, I can tell you. They didn't spirit the rod though. That's what I can tell you. And but, uh, but it molded us that, as my siblings a... and myself. So I'm I'm grateful for it. So when I do become a family man, I am... Um, 
well equipped in how right. to grow <laughs> my child. Right. How many siblings do you have? I have a brother and a sister, a younger brother and a younger sister. So I'm grateful for them. All right. As you, well. you want to give them a shout out? Big up to my brother and his wife and his son, that is Jason Simpson, Alicia, and JJ. And big up to my sister all the way in Atlanta, Georgia. One love, peace, and love. All right. Oh, yes. Yeah, bless, oh, yes. bless God. All right. Yes, thanks, Mama and Dad. All right. At this time, we're going to go into um, the final session of tonight's show, which will be our question and answer. All right. So, guys on Zoom, you know how we do it. Guys on YouTube, you know how we do it. All right. So, if you have a question, open up your microphone, open up your camera, and then ask and interact with Paulus. Even my parents, if you want to ask me a question, you can. All right, I think we have a question from Camille Robinson on YouTube. What motivates you to do what you do? Uh, Cam Robinson, life, life motivates me. Just having the, the power of life that God has given us to be able to wake up in the morning, breathe that fresh air and to know that I am, all my senses are intact that he has given me. That is what motivates me and because he has enabled me with the strength because in part of the bible says young man i call upon you because you are strong and when you can wake up and you wake up covid free thanks be to god not ill all your senses intact your legs them work everything work you know our legs that is work everything work you know every you know your hands you can breathe you get up off the bed and you know a lot of persons wake up sometimes they can't get up off the bed them legs can't move them can't feel them legs so once I'm able to do that, first thing I do is give God thanks. And that in itself is what motivates me, that drives me and say, today is a new day. Today is I can accomplish something else. What new can I accomplish today? And because I, everything that, that I do is what I love doing. I love my job in IT. I'm at school. I, I love that because I'm studying. Just completed my, my Just of the Peace tra commission training. Enjoyed that. I'm doing music, enjoying that. I have my family, enjoying that. I work in the sport. I'm, I'm, I'm an avid sports person, so I, I, I'm in the sporting arena from basketball to track and field. I love that as well. So I, everything that I do, I love. So it's like you never feel like you're working really and truly because you're just enjoying all that you do. That is what motivates me. And to do all of that, you have to have life that God has given you, and you use that life wisely. Camille, thank you for that question. Awesome. All right. Let's take German Francis and then we'll take Dale on Zoom. Hey, Paul, what's up? German Biggie Francis. <laughs> yeah. Blessed Lord. Oh, man, I have to ask a um, question real quick because um, I'm on the road, you know. So That's fine. Be careful on the road, bro. Yeah, man, I'm at the show right now, but I don't even get to watch the presentation because I'm on and off. But right. what I want to ask you, though, um, how do you find the time to do all of that, man? Music, sport, 95 because i asked that question because I, I didn't get to watch the full presentation so that's fine uh, yeah so just be careful on the road to... and you know yes, that sir, yeah, you man. can always watch it back when it's uploaded to the music hot networks once definitely, you like subscribe definitely. you can always do that you know all right definitely, time management man. is very important and that i glad i'm thank god and god has given us wisdom and hope and it's 24 hours in a day so we have to learn how to balance that and and be very wise with how we spend our time because sometimes we have time and we don't we're not doing anything with it so for me personally, I have to watch and know what I'm doing. And it's because I enjoy what I'm doing, Biggie. Sometimes the time, yeah. you don't even know where the time goes. But if I know that job is from 7.30 to 4, but I have a rehearsal at 5 to 7, you understand me? Between 4 or 4.30, I got maybe just relax, get something to eat, refresh myself onto that thing for rehearsal. When I'm at home now, because curfew is 8 o'clock, I might have schoolwork to do. So I know between 8 and 10, I try and do my schoolwork. Then I might have some little work work to do. What I try not to do is to do carry home work from work to do, because that's your time with yourself. So you spend time with yourself. Sometimes you have to have your prayer time, your Bible study time, your reading time. Yeah. You call your family. You have your time with your friends. You, you chill out with your friends. You make time for all of these things. Then you, if you have to get up in the mornings and do your exercise, curfew ends at 5. You're out there at 5.30 doing your jogging 
jogging or you're swimming or you're weightlifting. Then you get ready for work again for 7.30. So you have to know within yourself how and which day and how you, what you do and how, and how you balance it. Watch, you watch your Netflix, of course, and relax and chill. Watch some YouTube videos, listen to music. Do these in whatever time you are allotted, but you have to know yourself and know how to manage that time that God has given you. 24 hours in a day, just manage it wisely. Yeah, man. Boy, you're a blessing. Hey, Chris, this man, you know, there's never a time I call on this man to help me out in, in terms of computer, and you know, this man don't find the time, you know, even when he's busy. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know. Give thanks. But, yeah, Give man. Thanks. Give you're thanks. a blessing, Give my thanks. you. You're a blessing. I'm blessed up Give myself, thanks. man. And, and I'm happy that I could have helped you. Thing. I hope I was yeah, able man. to successfully help you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, man, yes, always, yes. man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Give thanks. And I'll go back and watch the thing later, so, you know. Thank you, Jeremy and Francis. Big all the best on the show. Yeah, man. All right. And remember Bless to up. save your money because you need it for retirement, too. Oh, God, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right. Good, good. All right. Call us. All right. Sure. Ma yeah. Wait, hold on, mom. I think there was a Dale that had his hand up for a question. So we're going to take Dale and then we can come to you, mom. Yes, good Dale. Night. Yeah, man. Good night. Chris. DD. Bless up. Bless up, sir. Mr. Simpson. Yeah, man. My brother. How are you, sir? International bass player. <laughs> um, um, Dale, are you able to open up your camera? You know, say right now, the camera <laughs> thing, I mean, I'm going to really wear a coat style. Yeah, man, show sure. <laughs> We haven't seen no. a face on, on the network since, no. since in know, your presentation. I know that, Chris, but, but here's, Dale, here's you the have thing. mom laughing. Because <laughs> she know, you know, she know, Dale. <laughs> here's the thing with the camera and me, you know, Chris. All right. It's just because Paulus' mother might be there. Now. Oh, good night. <laughs> yes, good night, man. Man. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I should take this opportunity also to thank um, the parents, Mr. and Mrs. Simpson, yeah, for right. um, the wonderful job you did, you know, in bringing up this young man. Uh, you know, you really tried. And, and, and it's, it's paid off. It's paid off. You know, to so God, God be the glory. glory. Praise the Amen, Lord. sister. Amen. Um, Paulus, um, I have to say I'm I'm really proud of you. Um, I know I don't I don't remember how we met. <laughs> At my age and stage, I'm not going to stress my brain on that. Um, but this this makes for a, a proud moment to see someone who um, is able to live your passion and balance it with other stuff. Um, you are a testament to the fact that it is able to, um, one, one is able to multitask. Um, we've always heard, you know, people saying, well, you have to choose one or the other. It's either nine to five or it's either music or, it's, or drama, whatever it is that you choose. Um, but Warren Buffett actually said that, you know, one cannot earn or one can't get rich from one source of income. And um, it's one of the things I, I tell even some younger people that multitasking or having multiple sources of income isn't a bad idea. Um, balancing all of these things now, though it may be a challenge, it still has um, the um, possibilities to it. And so one has to be realistic in life. As you said, you have 24 hours, or now with curfew, you have less than 24 hours. What do you do? How do you do it? You know, and it's all possible. Um, just like to add to, I, um, I heard you speaking about the investing or, you know, putting away money and all of that. <clears throat> I'd like to tell some of the younger musicians, um, I hope, Chris? Yes, sir, Dale. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, just so quiet. So I was wondering if I was, you know, <laughs> no, at least in your loud and clear, man. No, man. Right. You have all of um, YouTube and, and 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 Zoom with you and the entire world, actually. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, just like to add to the part because you had you had you know done just uh, a short synopsis of um how you know ways in which musicians can you know spend or invest their monies when they earn. It. Um, and of course, there's the expectation that, you know, we soon be going back or people should soon be going back um, to life as we knew it prior to March 2020. 
And um, for those who might be around for that and who will engage, you know, at that level, um, I'll just share some, some, some little nuggets. One of the nuggets I learned as a youngster from my pastor was that it's not how much you earn, but it's how much you save. Right? And you know, someone could extend on that and say it's not necessarily how much you earn, but what you do with it. Um, some figures were called out earlier, you know, like a 4,000, like an ideal situation where one <coughs> travels and earns 4,000 a weekend. What do you do with that? You have, six, you know, you have roughly, now it would be like, what, 600,000. Do you come back and buy a car? Do you come back and start buying some gadgets? Do you buy clothes? What do you do? Um, you have to think long term. How about thinking about maybe a piece of land? You know, it might not necessarily be in the urban space because property in the urban space is very expensive. But a piece of, a piece of property maybe further up in the hills where it's cheaper, you know, and you go to NHT or mm -hmm. you go to a, a financial institution and, you know, you have a conversation with them along that line as to, you know, what you would need to bring to the table to negotiate alone. Um, younger musicians, <clears throat> I'd like to encourage you, whatever you're earning, you know, pay your taxes. The Bible says, give to Caesar what is Caesar and unto God what is God. So you pay your tithes and you pay your tax, you know. Um, you save your money save towards the retirement, save towards some sort of real estate. Um, the fact is, many of you are just intent on being, you know, musicians, but you, you, you intent on be, you're intent on being, you know, full persons in a sense where you'll have families of your own. Where are you going to put those families? You might want to, you know, have a piece of land, build a house, take your time, build a house, you know, so you have somewhere to put your wife and children. These things are very important because when the when the bright lights are turned off and the, the promoter is gone home, all right, and you are looking back 10, 15 years on your career as a musician, you know, you spent 30 years in, you know, traveling the world, going to every continent possible, going to all different countries, interfacing with various cultures. What do you have to show for that? You know, so it's very important that. This, this is actually part of your process as you move on in life. I think I've said more than enough. So it's back over to you, gentlemen. Wow, thank you very much. And you have added for, to my synopsis. And Sir D, you know you're one of my mentors as well, always encouraging me. And I give thanks for that. Even though you're a bass player, that doesn't make any difference because music is music. Musician is a musician. And you would Indeed. encourage me in all aspects of life, both as a, you know, you know, you'd have always have some words of advice for life in itself in music. And I've had the opportunity to share stages with you because you have shared yeah, so yeah. many stages with, with so many artists. And to get that opportunity to add to my biography, it's, it's a pleasure. And I give thanks. And I continue looking forward to sharing more stages and to developing the other younger persons that we will share stages with. Yeah, man. All right. So thank cool. you very much for that. You're welcome. Mom, you had a question? Yeah. yeah. Sir. Yes. Would you Herb wish to continue actively in music when you reach the age of retirement from your nine to five? Yes, I'd love to, because I think I'm still going to be in the fountain of youth. So where I can practice and where I can teach and where I can still play, even if I might not be shake, I might be shaking, but that shaking might can still do something on the keyboard, you know. I don't know. Why not? Of course, definitely. Mm -hmm. I would love to, but I'll take it as far as I can. And wherever God has given me the strength to, it will not stop until he takes me home. Amen. Okay. I see Aldane have a question, Chris, in the YouTube chat. So I hope I'd answered what part of his question because he had asked um, about time management. I hope I did answer that question earlier about the time management. And then I had another question that says, how do you maintain a positive attitude towards each activity which you have to do? It's my, mm -hmm. maybe the same answer because you see each activity that I have, I look at the challenge that it gives me. Like on my job, sometimes I'm in IT. So, you know, you have to be doing support services. Sometimes you have to be thinking ahead with emerging technologies, how to implement that in the job, you know, from a network security standpoint and to ensure, you know, 
all of these things. So I look at, or if I have a problem, sometimes Dale or sometimes Jeremy and Biggie would call me and say, hey, how you help me, help me to understand this in main stage. Oh, this crash, how I can bring up this? I look at the challenge and whenever I see a challenge, I like, yes, I have something to research, I have something to do, I have something to use my brain for. So that is what actually keeps me giving that positive because I know I'm going to be helping somebody. First of all, there's a song that says, if I can help somebody, is that, am I right? As, as, I pass I pass along, along. as I pass along, right? Then my living in is my not living in vain. Not vain. So knowing that I have to help someone is a positive thing for me, Aldine. Two, before you can help them, you have to have the knowledge and, and to, to help them. So that means I have to go and research it and everything. So it, it gives me that capacity to learn something new as well and to have something else that I can add to my brain and to be well and rounded and more developed because I've learned something new that I can use to help somebody. So these things actually help you. And these are the different aspects of things that keep me positive at each activity. Hope that answers your question. You can always ask me off the air more questions if you want. I see Novel have a question that says, have you ever worked with a miserable artist who upset you to the point where you want to walk out of the rehearsal? Ah, uh, good question. Yes and no. Yes and no, Novel. Yes. Um, I have had work with artists where them come, you have some artists that come a little with them chest high too. Because you know, them is them, you're playing for them, so you have to answer to them and they come sometimes it might have been an off day for them or it could be something musically that was wrong because they know because you have some artists that actually know their music as well so musicians play back what the artists ask you to play back sometimes i know you want to add this and add that but initially play back what they ask you to play back because that's it they have a sound in their head they know what they want to hear play back that you see once you can give them what they want then you can add everything else afterwards when you don't do that they can get miserable and everything how do you approach that when somebody get miserable on you one, you have to watch the attitude of whoever you're working with, either a band member or an artist. But in this case, you ask about an artist. Listen to what the artist have to say. All if you know, say you're right. Sometimes you have to give up your right for peace. Say, say you're wrong. All right, my artist, how I can fix it? What do I need to do? And don't do it in any cynicism or sarcasm, but from a true heart to get it right. Even when you know, say, because he must know what he was listening for or what he wanted. And you maybe know you weren't doing that or you weren't, you were doing it, but maybe you overdo it. Just do it how he wants it. If you just want it here, just do it there. For example, I don't know if you can hear the keyboard. You, you know, you don't want to be and I do all sorts of something. Just give them what they want. You know, if they, if they just want the three cards, give them the three cards. It might sound monotonous to you or mundane to you, but they want that. Smile. Whenever something happens like that, smile. Also, you have to have that um, attitude of receptiveness, welcomeness. Uh, how should I put it now, Novel? Just um, in terms of, because if you go get agitated and upset, you can't out fire with a fire. A soft answer turn it away right as well. So sometimes you just pray within yourself quickly and say, God, help me to manage this. How do I do this? And the Lord will actually, you know, guide and help you. And you maybe just answer in a particular and say, yes, my artist, give thanks. Wrong thing. We could take a five minute break and, you know, get back together with it. And we could just work it out. Or how you want me to do it? This is how you want me to do it? All right, my artist, ready, let's go. Come in, man, drum in. And you're gone again. So it's just how you have to come with that positive attitude. I've never had an artist really walked out in a rehearsal, thanks be to God. Because again, respect is due. You see, once you can show the respect to an artist, the artist will show respect to you no matter how upset they are. Because they know that they will never walk out on a Dale Brown, a Jeremy and Biggie Francis, a Chris. You understand me? Because they have respect for the musician as well. So I hope that answered your question there. I'm um, Paulus. Yes. I, I know the audience would like to see you perform for at least ah. two minutes. All right, so okay. we're going to break sure. the, 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 the Q&A. And I, I would like you to, to play something for our audience. All right, everybody, you know, for me, the jumping up and down thing is more when I'm on stage. So you might not see a lot of that now. Um, but I don't know if they can see this. This was something I was working on as well the other day in Ableton. Um, Chris, tell me if you can hear it. Hearing it? Yes, all is I well. I hope YouTube is hearing it as well. This was something one night I was um, saying that, because it's good to learn other softwares as well. For especially Mac users, if you have a Mac, Ableton is very good. It's very light on your system resources. Main stage is good, don't get me wrong. So I was messing around with YouTube. So everything you hear, here 
was from Ableton, literally, that I played. So I just went full on with it, little, just, just to show you what I was working on. And then I just play a simple little song after that live. Just a little something I was working on. So everything you hear, guys, is from Ableton that I messed around with. So you can always link me afterwards, if anything. Then I'm going to play something, maybe a little soft and nice for you. Just a little something. <laughs> Not very big on <laughs> cards like uh, Delroy Pitchy uh. and some of these other guys, but I just play what I can play. And when Dale and all of these other drummers and everybody come around, they, they make me sound really good. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So thank you. Bro, <laughs> I, I, I sorry, I, I'm sorry. Um, that, that chair there that you're sitting on is holding your back and, and, and those I know, things, you know, it is, because. It is. <laughs> As you remember, Chris, we spoke in off air where the plan that I originally had was hoping for the curfew hour to change because of the yes. live stream time that I. But I know we'll get around to doing it in the next actual presentation. So, yes. So, guys, definitely, don't give me for the cards so. here. All right, please uh, don't give me for the cards. Bro, that was awesome, awesome, awesome rendition, dear bro. All right. Let's get back to YouTube. I think Davian Berry, do you practice new stuff in music? Yes, it's very good because I do listen to a wide range of music. So I listen, I was taught, I didn't go to Edna Manley like everybody, but give thanks for all who went to Edna Manley. I support you, I salute you, I have my hats off to you. I want to just mention uh, Gregory Palmer, Otney Lewis, these guys, I, you know, I look up to a lot, Dale Brown. You know, Gregory Palmer, I must say, sometimes he will call me Chris and say, what time is your lunch time? Come by my house and just show me cards of his own free will. No, who does that? Let's, let's be fair, who does that? Sometimes I'll be there giving him a little change, you know, because it must take time and energy, even though it's my guest still. But to impart that knowledge to me, sometimes I'm giving him a little something, something, you know what I mean? And he say, no, he don't want it, him run me. Um, so I give God thanks for those who have taught me, from, who went to Edna and they have imparted their knowledge onto me. And I'm able to use that along with all the things that I would listen to. So I would listen to classical music because I was trained classically. So I do read music apart from playing from ear. So I do read. I stopped at grade five, uh, Royal Board School of Music. Um, 
So I listen to everything and then I do practice new stuff that I try to learn, Davion, are, are here as well. Because I listen to certain things. Because I mean, when I travel, I do play at churches in the States and you have some churches, Delroy can, Pitchy can, I've spoken about it in his presentation too. So you have different types of churches that might have a different sound, Southern Baptist as opposed to Episcopal. I don't remember how to pronounce it. Ep All right, thanks, mom. You're right. Thank you very much. So you have those different type of sounds. So you have to learn and you have to practice this. And these are the different things and how you can fit in as well and sometimes get the work because you give the sound that they want. So yes, Dave, and I do practice different um, and new things in music because there's always something new to learn. There's a new chord, there's a new style, there's a new way to do it. There's a new sound with the whole advent of the MIDI and the main stage. So you learn how to practice and putting new things into music. So yes, I do. Big up yourself, Bola Frass as well. My real friend Milton Pinot, big up yourself. Big up to my staff members at work that are on. Melanie, everybody, give thanks, give thanks. Any other questions? Let me see. Well, it's not a question. It's not a question, but um Delroy, uh, pitchy. Oh yes. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Um, I must say it was very. I was. I. I enjoyed. Um, open up the camera, Delroy. Oh, I gotta open up the camera. Oh, yes. My yeah, so my parents can yes. see you too. Yeah. Oh Lord, <laughs> it says that, that you cannot. It said that the, the host disabled it. Uh, Chris, you gotta open it because it's it's disabled. I can't do it. Uh, uh, All right, do that now. Do do it one more time. Okay, there we go. There we uh, go. Excuse uh, the lighting. Um, master organist, Mr. White himself. Oh Lord, nice. the master organist. <laughs> um, I must say, um, I am very pleased. I'm very pleased with um the. Hold on, let me turn on the light because it's it's no, I got to let everybody see me still. But it it was really good. I I really enjoyed um the presentation that you um did tonight regarding the balance because musicians are like doctors. You know what I'm saying? And um, doctors need rest too. They need their own healing, you know? Um, and I noticed, especially with, um, even in the secular world, you notice there's a lot of suicide with, with artists, musicians and so forth because there's not a balance, um, you know? And you said some, few, um, some really good points um, I was listening and, and so forth. And I, I have to say yes, because, you know, musicians, especially being the church, you know, I play for churches and so forth. And, you know, you give up all you can and so forth. And it's like you want something to pour out to, you know what I'm saying? You want somebody to pour some, you know, back into you. And, um, you, you know, you become so empty and then you only serve with that emptiness. After a while, then you became, you just, you know, become brittle if that makes sense. So I do believe, um, I, I will say um, what you were saying earlier with the vacation and all that type of stuff, it is mostly important. I'm taking mine again because I need another one. I need another one. Enjoy it, bro. <laughs> enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah, my birthday is next week, so I got to take another one. All here. the best on the birthday and peace and love. Yes, and make sure you're saving towards that retirement. So when you're in that age, that your part. birthday, you enjoy it more. Right. And, and that part, too, is, um, you know, um, with the retirement, I'm going to say this real quick and um, get off um, the retirement as musicians. A lot of musicians play. I've known musicians who play for big artists. And, you know, when it comes on, you know, when they pass on, they don't even have the proper you know, life insurance, all that type of stuff, you know, to take care of them. And also even to pass on to their own kids, you know, or their wife or, you know, you know, in law, you know, common mother in law, whatever, you, whatever you call it, you know, and so, so you know, um, I must say it, it, what you did tonight was really, really, really good. I'm very, I'm highly pleased. I'm highly pleased because a lot of musicians out there, um, need to know, you know, apart from playing is good, you know, giving your all, you know, the performance is, is one thing, but at the same time, you have another performance that you need to maintain. You see what I'm saying? So, but that's well all said. I have to say. Well tonight. said. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well said. Yes. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you very much. Enjoy the birthday when it comes. Yeah, I appreciate it. All right, cool. Chris, all right. I see you. You're sure. going to YouTube.
Oh, okay, okay, fine. Yeah, all right. Zoom. Joel is on Zoom. Go ahead, Joel. Yeah, man. So, I tell you, brother, I really appreciate um, the forum. I may tell you, so the presentation was, Mwah. you know, then I got some Hello. restaurant and them say the meal was delectable. <laughs> yeah, man. Give thanks, give yeah. thanks, give thanks. It was That's short, it. but I mean, you can always link me afterwards for more. But I just wanted to get some major points out there. So, give thanks. Yeah, man. So, you know, just continue to do the good work, brother. Mommy and daddy, you know, you did a good job. You know, I yes, swear to be like Apollos one of these days. <laughs> God, <laughs> so be, God be the glory. Give thanks. God give, thanks. give thanks to her. Yeah, give thanks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and for the question for the, the answer in response to the. Yes, how much it was after so, at, six, at, at age 65? At age 65, um, that would be 45 years from now. So that would be 800 by 52 weeks, which would be 41,000. I think it's 500. And at the end of 40 years, at 65, it would be 1872, 1,872,000. And that's US you're talking here. So when you convert that by your 150 Jamaican, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. All right, there you go, yeah. bro. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, Paul, can you just, all right. Um, you want to go to YouTube, Paul? Sure, because I saw Aldane had a question asking, uh, how do you go about practicing? For me, Aldane, it's tricky. I'm not you guys that went to Edna. So you have an art and a style of which you practice. I practice very late in the night, though, because, um, yes, I have to sleep. Up. Some people wonder if I do sleep. I do. But for me, it's quieter in the night. I get to think. And then I, well, how I practice, because I use headphones, because I don't have to plug into a speaker to wake up anybody. So I try to put in at least an hour and a half to two. So you practice your skills. You're supposed to be running your skills, both hands. I do them individually. Then I do them, you, you know, your pentatonic and your, all of those different skills that you can practice. Um, so I go through all of that. And then if I'm rehearsing for a particular artist, I focus on my part in practicing on that night for the artist. So if I have to set up my main stage, my sets, my, my patch list and everything, I set it up. I run through it properly. If I have to do my Ableton that I fly my stems in, I set up all of that and I just practice what I have to, my part that I have to play. I can't practice the bass here or the drummer's part. And if something comes to my head or new, I make a note of it. So when I go to rehearsal, I'll mention it because I don't want to change anything sometimes. It's not good to change anything if you have a set thing working with. But if you want to introduce something new, you mention it to the artist and or to the band. If you're the MD, no problem. And then you introduce if it works, it works. Okay. If it doesn't. But that's how I practice. So my skills, and if I'm playing for an artist, I practice my set list and whatever. I'm prepared as much as possible and go through it over and over until it becomes a part of me. I listen a lot as well in terms of if I'm, again, playing for an artist. Part of my practicing is not only physical. So on one night, I might spend three hours just listening the songs and listening the original way the songs are. Because if you don't understand the original root of a song, sometimes when you're ready, you can't add a lot of improvisions to it because first you have to understand the root as i said earlier and the basics of the song and then from that will come ideas so i listen to the songs that i have to do over and over no matter if it's the original thing i listen to it so i'll have a night when i just listen to the set then the next time i go and then start to practice what i've listened i've been on the road already before and been asked to play for other people when i asked my management if it's okay they said sure and I'm on a flight maybe to Tampa and I'm listening to the artist's song and that is part of our practice. So while I'm there listening, I'm getting it in my head and trying to play it in the imaginary keyboard because sometimes you'll see my finger moving. I was on a flight to, the, um, to somewhere else in the States and a lady, when I came off the flight, said, are you a musician, sir? So I said, yes. And I wondered why. I was asking her why. She said, you had your headphones and while you were sleeping, Apart from maybe I was a little bit of drooling, forgive me, mom and dad, but yeah, because I was really tired. But as I was leaving work, jump on a flight um, and then to go, she said, while I was sleeping, listening to music, my hands were moving like I was playing whatever I'm listening to. And she said she had never seen that before. So that in itself is also like a mental. So you have a mental practice and then you have the physical practice. I hope that answers your question, Sir Goodall. From YouTube, yes. All right. Um, any other question from 
zoom we have any question from zoom yes Peche, yeah, you're right Delroy. listen to the original is correct <laughs> No more questions? Anybody? <laughs> now, that's it for me, you know. I know people need to go um, to one, bed and have to go to work. Thing. Sure. Um, what is your favorite key to play? All keys. I don't, I don't have a favorite key. I don't have a favorite key. I, I, I learned to, and I tried to play in all keys. I don't transpose. I've, I was always taught never to transpose. And then again, as a classical pianist, when I was learning classical music, we didn't have transpose at the time. You actually had a piano. So you had to learn in all the respective keys. I might not be very strong in all of the keys, but I try to play in every single key. So no matter if I'm in, for example, I might be at maybe weak in the key of B or E or F sharp or G flat minor. I mean, a G flat, sorry. And what I do is I don't transpose. I still try and play in that key. Even if I play the simplest way in that key, it's better than making a mistake or trying to transpose. So I don't have a favorite key. I play in all keys and I might play more proficient in some, but I still, and that's part of the practicing all day to practice in all different keys as well, to build your strength, to build your fingers. And remember when you're near retirement, you don't really get arthritis. If you know good musicians, they don't really get arthritis because them practice and them fingers moving good. and. You, you move your body good so you don't really get that right as much but i do have a favorite key and i practice in every key and if i'm weak in it i just play simple in that weak key until i get better okay great great same thing go on thanks thanks for that no problem and thanks thanks me have to give a shout out to me you really you know at your presentation and think me have to give a shout out to chad because i'm just selling keyboard chad say listen don't ever use the transpose button. Yes, yeah. I remember yeah. we got somewhere and um, there was a musician that was there, you know him better than me. And he was like, um, what are you transpose? And me I say, you know, me no know because me never use the transpose button. So me have to end up play. I'm a play all right, but you know, the transpose yeah, button is not a friend at all. <laughs> I mean, I saw that happen on a stage show once and I maybe can share this quickly, Chris, where um somebody borrowed my keyboard actually and and they were asking me where was the transpose button i was like i don't even know because i don't use transpose so i really don't know um they eventually found it i mean they played proficient you know don't get me wrong and then they apparently another mm -hmm. artist that they were playing for came with a different key and the screen went because sometimes the screen on my keyboard go and it go and god did help him after that because he couldn't transpose so and he had to be like you know but that's why I said to people, try and practice and in all keys as much as possible. Awesome. All right. We're going to take two final questions. Uh, one from YouTube. And... All right. Two persons uh, just showed up. And so we have three more questions. All right. Sure. So we're going to take the final one from YouTube. Um, Milton Pinock is asking, which football team i know is i know he was favorite? gonna go there i know that was <laughs> going to happen um big up to all the manchester manchester city fans and chelsea fans that you made the, the champions league final but my team i'm going to be honest and i'm not going to be a bandwagonist my or my today's team is manchester united i was officially a lover of liverpool from back in the days of ian rush and those guys, John Barnes coming down. Some of the young people might not know that. And then I switched in latter years to Manchester United. My mom is an avid football lover as well because she loves Argentina, Diego Maradona. Don't mess with my mother and her football. Please don't mess with my mother and her football. She's very, you know. But Manchester United is my current English Premier League team. Real Madrid is my current Spanish team. And I do like in Syria A, Inter Milan and Juventus. But that is the answer. Big up my real friend. All right, all right. Bless up. So we're down to the, almost to the end of tonight's show. Yes. So we have two more persons on Zoom. We're going to take Delroy White and then Paul Graham. And Great. then that will be the end of our show in terms of the Tell, tell Alden to message me afterwards about that Ableton question from YouTube. Go ahead um it right? was um you mentioned something again regarding the um <laughs> the transpose um yes. i'm glad you said it um and it's again I, i'm not trying to sound bashful 
but um my, my dad from Jamaica always tell me there's no no shortcut in music you know um I know people learn differently and I do understand but transpose and again the Bible says study to show that self approved you know you should learn every key because you know the opportunity is there if you want to be a pianist and you go to a wedding and so forth you can't play say they don't have a motif or whatever not you know you 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 limit yourself and then now you lose a lot of money let's talk about organ organ right now i'm not talking about the digital one i'm talking about like the you know pipe organs are all them type of organs you know common organs you know you have to play the organ as it is no transpose you know and you know People, I've seen a lot of musicians, I mean, young musicians up here start transposing and it's like getting $400 a Sunday. Yes. <laughs> and I agree. $400 a Sunday. I agree with Four, you. I've seen it. I've Sunday seen it. Don't worry. It. And, if, and if, if, if the transpose button ever fly off of the keyboard, that, dog, God help them. Support. God help you them, know? man. God help them. You know, so I don't, I think it's, I, I think it's kind of, it's, it's wrong. I, I don't believe in it. I think it's a spirit. I just, I don't, I don't really condone in the transpose thing because it just, it makes you look like, like you're pretending that you are fluent um, in the sense and you're not, you know, and I'm not saying it to be uh, shady or anything, but what I'm saying is. It can be deceptious you know, in Adele, right? Sometimes huh? it can be deceptious actually. Well, not to brag but I'm I'm going to say something. I mean, I'm not against mm -hmm. it as you neither, because I'm I'm not telling somebody not to. Right. Because there are times that it actually does come in handy, because the transpose actually comes in handy, because there are pros and cons to everything. So whereas right. we agree with Delroy, because I remember playing a keyboard and two keys were broken, and I had to use a mm -hmm. transpose to avoid okay. playing those two keys that were broken. And that's the only right. time I did it because there were broken keys on the keyboard that I right. got. Mm -hmm. So it was difficult for me. So I had to use the transpose and then do what I had to do. So the transpose does come handy. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes you might be stuck in a program you're using right. and you have to go fly the transpose. But as I tell people, it's not something you should practice. Only use it where necessary. And if it's in a dire situation, you might have a singer that is off key. I don't know right. if transpose can help them, but yeah. For me, if I, I, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I can't transpose because I, once I, it's the key, well, I guess my perfect pitch, that's where my perfect pitch comes in. Um, It, it just, it just don't seem right. Like I get confused. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even mean. imagine myself touching that button. Mm -mm, that just, it just don't seem right, you know, because it's like, okay, why am I, you know what I'm saying, doing this? Because if I'm in C sharp and I'm transposing C sharp into F, you know what I'm saying? Oh, uh oh. <laughs> yeah, you're actually in C sharp. So everybody, he was actually in C sharp. Yeah, he was right. He was in C sharp. He was actually. I, I tested that. He was in C sharp. Oh, Lord. I know okay. you're gonna test that. You know, you know, Paul. <laughs> you could tell. Oh God. Yeah, he he he, he got it. Man. Yes, but um, but yeah, you know, I, yeah, and I'll say this real quick. I remember I was doing an audition with someone before, and um, he wanted to be on the band. And he was transposing. I told him to play Total Praise. And he can play an F. He can play an F fluently. And he transposed in F. And the F was in C sharp, but he was playing in F. And I said, no, I want you to play in C sharp. He said, I'm playing in C sharp. I said, no, come out of F. Don't transpose in F. I want you to play in C sharp. And he was like, how you know that? I'm like, because, you know, what if not? Not because I have perfect pitch in that sense, but at the same time, if you're playing with other musicians and so forth, you need to build your skills up to that level because you'll be embarrassed by um, artists and 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 past. Yes, and whatnot. definitely, definitely. They will Especially call you if out there's an artist that either. knows. Yeah, I see, I've seen that. That's correct. You know, so I'm just saying that out there, just to you know, you know, get that embarrassment, you know, and stuff. So you know. But that's all I have to say. I shared my testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> all right. All right. Respect, Pichi. Let's take yes, Paul. Sir. And then Paulus is going to play us uh, uh, one of his best songs, one of his best pieces. And then we'll close tonight. show. Sure. All right. Um, Paul Graham. Yeah, man. Good night, everyone. Good night. Namesake, Mr. Graham. Yeah, big up, big up, um, Paulus. Well, basically, you have answered my question because one of the questions I really want to ask, you answer it still. Um, what if, what if it is more like an emergency? 
and we'd have to use transport or the, you know, like for example, as we as we said, uh, if what if two keys, you know, break, we'd have to transport because really and truly, you know, it it come on the keyboard. So I want to know if it's something literally bad and thing. But I'm not defending the fact that um one should stay in transport because there are twelve keys and you know have to master it because ah. Uh, you know, you could be on a stage show and because you are transport as a person. And what if light gone? You know, you'd be embarrassed. But you've <laughs> answered my question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, for real. Give thanks for that. Give thanks for that. Yeah. I give thanks. Right. I was able to answer your question. So I'm not right. saying it's bad, and Delroy is not saying it's bad neither. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's just that there are yeah. pros and cons, but we encourage musicians not to if you don't have to. Yeah. All right. Here you go. Yes, that awesome. Bless up. All right. Paula Simpson, yeah. I definitely have to extend sincere thank you. And thank you, Gratitude sir. on the behalf of the Music Hacks Network. Remember to like, subscribe, you, people, you, Music Hacks. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, you could have been practicing, right? But you took the time out to be on this show tonight Give to time. share with our YouTube and our Zoom audiences and i am truly grateful for that it was a very very informative presentation thank you Amen. and we we thank you for that thank you mom and dad simpson thank you all mom right. and dad all right. Right. Thanks. All, thanks, mom. all right bless so bless up all the guys on youtube everybody thank you man. tune yeah. in live pick up all the guys yeah all right and all the guys on zoom guys meaning thanks male and for... female because i realize it's both you know you know? It was a blessing, man. Yes, it was man. a blessing. Male and female. All right, thanks for tuning. But at this time, we are going to ask Paulus to play something while we exit. Everybody, thank you very much. I'm going to play one God of my favorite songs. And I'm going to end with my one of my favorite songs. Um, uh, Paulus, before you play, what is your okay. YouTube channel name again? Crazy you Jamaican Keezy. C R A. Z-Y, Jamaican, K-E-Y-S-I-E. -E. Well, it's crazy give away his name, but cool. Yeah, all right. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you, Chris, again. Anytime you're ready, fine. Hit me up at any time. I, I make myself available. And it was indeed a pleasure. And I thank you. And I hope that this song will bless you all.
Cristo, Cristo, Cristo.